Greetings again, my brother. I was going to continue in uh, Ephesians chapter 3 about the mystery that, uh, that Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, having ascended into heaven and seen reality, brings back the reality to our spirits and opens our mind to the manifestation of who we now are in Christ. And that now, as the book of Hebrews says, we can approach the throne of grace through help needed in time of need. When you're tempted, it does not say to try to overcome temptation by human effort or your human willpower. It says, submit yourself to God who is a higher power. Resist the devil in the power of the Spirit and he will flee from you. Because temptation is trying to get my knees met apart from God's provision. And you don't need it. Because he provides for his children. And apart from that, you don't need it. But I'm going to continue in this mystery that uh, the Holy Spirit brings to us through the Apostle Paul's teaching, which is the gospel. I believe I left off with uh, verse 4, Ephesians 3, verse 4. By referring to this, we read to you an understanding by insight into the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the Spirit. So it's only, this revelation can only come to you through the Holy Spirit, and that's what he's saying. It came to him, he's giving it to us, because we have the Holy Spirit in us. Now the Holy Spirit can enlighten our minds to the revelation given Paul. Amen. Which in other generations had, had not been made known to men, has now been revealed. To be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body of Christ, and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So this is good news, is it not? Amen. That in Christ there's no Jew or Gentile, because that's what Paul teaches. That in Him, with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and our union with that resurrection in baptism, that we have the forgiveness of sins, that it is a gift from God, that now we can know Him. The word know in the Greek, in the Hebrew, means to become one with by experience. So now through the, the Holy Spirit, we can experience the life of Christ, that Zoe life that in John he says that he is. He says that light was the life of men. And those who received him, he gave the right to become sons of God. That's who you are, that's who I am. We are part of one body, we have one head, one authority. And that authority is over your thought life. Jesus is either your Lord or he is not Lord. And that includes your thought life. So even our circumstances that don't look good to us and the things we're going through that looks like we're being defeated, um, maybe if we put faith and know that Jesus is Lord, he'll get us through it. And in doing so, it builds our faith. Well, it, the scripture says that the temptation comes from the world and from Satan. It says God uses that temptation as a means of testing to see if you're going to trust Him as your source of life in this circumstance. Amen. So in this circumstances, I see God in it and behind it, although the temptation has come from outside. Because the scripture says there's no temptation. It says every temptation is outside the body except sexual immorality, which is a sin against the own body. So I'm fighting against principalities and powers. So the only way I fight against this temptation is through a higher power. And that's what the power of the Spirit is because Satan has no power over the power of God. He's sovereign. Jesus Christ is seated on the throne and Satan has been placed under his feet. Therefore, if Jesus is my Lord, he's been placed under my feet. As long as I live by the power of the one in authority and that's Jesus. If you remember in the synoptic gospel it says Jesus, unless you enter into the, the strong man's lair and, and spoil his goods, you cannot defeat him. That's what he done at the cross. And I'm paraphrasing there. But Jesus entered into Satan's lair, which is what? Sin and death. It goes back to Genesis and his fulfillment at the cross. That when sin entered in and death entered in, then God by his grace gave a sacrifice. He gave an altar where his presence was. He gave you the blood to protect your soul from sin. Sin is an it. Sin is a power. It's a force. So if you're sinning, 
and sin is your master. And the power of the sin is in the law by trying to keep it through the flesh. Right. In 1 Corinthians 15, 6, it says, The wages of sin and death, but the strength is in the law. So Satan's power over you is in the law. If you're trying to perfect the flesh, if you're living out from the flesh, then Satan is master over you. But if you're living by the power of the Spirit, then he is not your master because you're not in the flesh anymore, but you're in the Spirit, and that's the truth. That's the mystery revealed to us.